Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Game Pass, I'm Nathan. So once again, I'm making a video about room farming because I'm a scrub and like being over leveled. What, can you blame me? But like compared to that last room farm video, which is very good early on, this one is absolutely god tier. This is end game farming level and you can get to it as early as directly after being the first main lord. Now I ain't no fool, I've seen a YouTube video or two in my time and odds are you've already heard of this spot. Farming chickens as they succumb to gravity in Florida 2.0. Yeah, I did see that one as well and that is what this video is about. What I didn't know, however, was the exact steps to get there and how easy it is even at low level. I also didn't know about the bonus 600,000 runes you can farm from this area with almost no effort at all. So let's dive right into it in my classic explain it like I'm five video style on how to unleash your inner Colonel Sanders yet again and farm chickens for maximum profit. Here's 600,000 runes an hour in an extremely easy farming spot in Elden Ring. So I'm going to throw up another spoiler warning. There are similar spoilers to my previous videos, Lunaria of the Lake stuff. However, I do spoil the bar's entire quest line here, as well as an endgame optional boss. Now, I know a lot of people care about boss spoilers, so I have given it its own section, and I will warn you again at the beginning of the section to make sure you skip it, so it's up to you. So to begin our mystical journey, you're going to need a handful of junk that can be easily found or picked up at any Midwestern state's garage sale. You will need some sort of bow ranged weapon, as magic's range won't work, with appropriate arrows or bolts. I'd also suggest you can actually, you know, be able to equip and use it. That goes without saying. You'll need a great rune, which you can get from beating Godric the Grafted in the first castle. And I would additionally highly suggest picking up the Golden Scarab for 20% more runes. There's a guide for that on the channel, as well as getting at least one gold chicken foot for the boss farm. If you don't plan on doing the boss farm, you don't need it. Aside from that, you're going to need determination, bravado, guts, and all other of thesaurus words for bravery, because we're going to go on a quest to appease an edgelord. All right, so you probably probably remember the first jackass NPC in the game you met named Far, who wears a white mask and basically calls you a virgin after just meeting you. Great guy, can't imagine why he doesn't have any friends. Well, you're going to need to complete his quest line in order to proceed. So after you kill Godric, you'll need to warp to the round table hold and enter the newly opened door in the main room. Then you can talk to gaming grandma who will tell us whatever these uh, fingers are saying. Fingers can talk with sign language, I guess, but this is uh, whatever. Once you do that, warp back to first steps point and you'll see that Var has left a note inviting all virgins to his Rose Church anime convention. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know my love for Nippon Steel and all things waifu, so we should probably head over there and see what he wants. The Rose Church is here in Lunara of the Lakes, and since Var can't spend two seconds in this game without trolling us, he didn't bother to put a point of grace on it, so you're gonna have to pick a close one and ride over each time. Once you get there, talk to him and he'll ask you if you found God by talking to two giant sentient fingers via grandma translation. Pick the first option that you're considering agnosticism, and he'll agree and give you five gross fingers. There's just so many fingers in this game. Game. These red fingers let you invade other players who are playing co-op, which you'll need to do three times to continue. I'm going to be honest, this took the longest out of this whole thing for me, but I do have three tricks to help speed it up. First off, you don't have to actually win or lose or even fight. As long as you get summoned, you can just immediately lose the finger severer multiplayer item to leave, and it does count. I tested this. Secondly, if you find that it says searching for more than like a minute, use the fingers to cancel the quest and restart it. There were times it seriously searched for 10 minutes, but when I canceled the search and tried again, it immediately popped me in. It's FromSoft's netcode being FromSoft's netcode. Lastly, the multiplayer in this game is split into zones, so sometimes the zone you're in just doesn't have people co-oping. So while search is queued up, you can try riding around the map to see if a different zone will better find you somebody to invade. Just FYI, if you do use a grace point to warp, it will disable matchmaking. You'll need to turn it back on again. So once you've gone and been killed three times, or maybe that's just me because I suck at PvP, head back to King Jerkface and report that you've somehow survived FromSoft's netcode with only minor trauma, and now we can continue. So Far decides to up the ante in terms of his creep factor, but not only initiating you into his weird order, but also giving you a magical white cloth that he wants you to, uh, dip made in blood in. Yeah, great. Luckily, he doesn't know we've acquired a waifu, despite me clearly having leveled up since he first saw us, but maybe the mask impairs his vision, so who knows. We're gonna go find an already dead waifu to work. What's next, Var? Maiden streamer bathwater? I I shouldn't give him any ideas. To find this, we'll need to go to the Church of Inhibition, which is here on the map, but it's a bit maddening to get to. You will understand why that's a genius pun in a minute. The easiest way is to hop through the Lucaria Academy, which is also the legacy dungeon of the area, but for that, you'll need a key to get in. You can find one here hiding behind a dragon 
dragon and then use the entrance over here to pop on in. Once inside, you pop the grace and ignore the dungeon and continue through the north exit. From here, you're going to go left, grab the grace and take a wide path around this cliffside to try to get to the top. But once you hit the northern point, you're going to have bigger problems. The Eye of Sauron, and this is not a joke, I'm pretty sure that's what that is, lives up on this cliff. And if he looks at you, you will get madness. When madness pops, you'll writhe around on the ground and lose both health and FP, which freaking sucks. Hugging the cliff seems to help break Sauron's line of sight. So channel your inner Frodo and Sam and sneak on up. Once you reach this walled village, this is where we're going to go through, but I highly suggest turning left first and popping a nearby grace, as if you die here, you'll have to go all the way back to the grace by the academy, which definitely happened to me more than once. Once in there, you just haul butt through the village, which for some reason thought it was a great idea to live next to the Eye of Sauron, so yeah, they've all gone insane, and head on up this hill. Our goal is the church at the top. As you approach the church, however, Torrent will disappear, and you know what that means. A torrent. Disruption can mean only one thing, invasion. This guy is really hard, and also the Eye of Sauron is going to keep popping madness on you, but him spawning actually doesn't block us from the church. So I suggest just hoofing it past him and hitting that grace, grabbing the stuff, and then fighting him. If you die, it's no biggie. You'll now respawn here. Behind the grace is some waifu tears, and to the left is a dead maiden. Take her, uh clothes? Yeah, this quest is getting more uncomfortable by the second. And then dip the white cloth in her blood and try not to think about how this kind of makes you a weirdo sex pervert, just as Var intended. Now return to Var and we will finish his quest. First, he'll touch you in a bad way on the finger, which if that happens in real life, please tell an adult. And then when you talk to him again, he will give you an amulet. You then can use this amulet to warp and we are finally at our endgame farm spot, Florida 2.0. All right, it's now time to find Super Mega Ultra Chicken from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Run forward and grab the map then left and grab the grace. Now be warned, this is an extremely high level area and everything here is going to basically one or two shot you. Don't fight, just flee. Head to the left and you can thankfully summon Torrent. After passing the first left detour, you're just going to hang on the left wall all the way through. Traverse through the uh, red Kool-Aid, uh, whatever, and head on up the hill. At the very tippy top, we will find our saving grace and this is our brand new farmland. From here, it's extremely simple. You've probably already seen videos of people doing this. Equip your XP talisman, trot over to the edge and look down. Grab yourself a bow. You'll see the arrow's ugly is chicken down there. He clearly longs for death, so let's help him with that. Poke him with an arrow. He will run towards the cliff and forget that his wings are purely ornamental and he cannot fly and he will fall to his doom, granting us between 13 and 16k runes. Now, sometimes he does remember he can't fly and he doesn't fall off the side of the cliff. I haven't found any real consistency with this. The only thing I've found that's consistent is if you shoot him right next to the grace, he seems to avoid falling off more often. So maybe hustle a little from the grace when you try. So this is our awesome new farming spot, sending a poor mangy chicken to its death over and over over and over in hell. But what if you want more runes more fast? Well, there's also a boss here that we can cheese, so let's do that too. All right, this is the part I warned at the beginning. This is a spoiler for this boss. If you do not want to spoil this boss, you want to fight him legit, etc., etc., uh, just skip on ahead to the end of the video. It hurts my retention, but I don't really care because I don't want you to be spoiled. So back at the starting grace in this area, we're going to head to the right past all of these poor guys. They seem to have caught some sort of super hybrid of COVID and Ebola, and they're really wanting to share it with you by means of self-explosion. So run and roll as fast as you can. Eventually, you'll find this large pile of, um, jello? Anyway, hop past it and up onto the catacomb. Here, you'll need to pop a light and head forward, taking almost every right you can. An enemy will spawn that will chase you through the entire place, so always be running and avoid him. Just follow this path I'm taking to the end and hit the grace. From here, we're gonna go cheese ourselves a boss. Run up the clip and ignore the guys who are just hanging out trying to become as gods. Yeah, they remind me of the robots from Nier Automata for some reason. I'm the only one? Just me? Nah, right, whatever. Let's take the elevator up and prepare ourselves. So this next step is the one I've been prepping for my entire Elden Ring playthrough. Go into the main arena and die. Yes, die. Finally, something at this game that I am good at. Now there will be a fog gate, but what if you enter an arena just through the side and avoid it? Let's find out. Strip down naked to a faster move speed and higher jump and hop your way onto these ledges to get inside. The trick you're going to need to use is that if you jump and then hold the dash button mid-flight and keep holding it, you will continue to run and far jump without needing to backstep. So use that to make this final jump to make it over to the side. Hop onto the arena and you'll find the boss. Well, he's clearly in shock that a park Pouring naked tarnished, ignores his fancy fog door and just waltzed in uninvited, and his shock is so great that he's not even gonna fight us. Put your stuff back on, including your XP talisman, and proceed to beat him up. Remember that right before you finish him off, you eat that gold KFC. Uh, why is everything room related in this game about chickens? That uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, once you kill him, you get a whopping 600,000 runes, as well as a great soul you can turn into a rad weapon, an even radder spell, and a trophy achievement. Wow, what a fantastic deal. What a great guide. You better give this video a like. Yeah, I'm a master of subtlety. Could you tell? And that's all I have for this tutorial. Like I said,
said, other people have definitely explained this before, but I wanted to do a complete guide because I had to watch like six videos before I finally pieced all this together. So I hope this helps in one convenient location with my bad jokes. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I appreciate everybody subbing and watching these videos. I hope this helped. I do have a lot of guides, follow-ups in the works, as well as some other videos. So keep an eye out for those, as well as Game Pass reviews on the channel at the normal rate. So again, thank you so much for watching and have a great time in Elden Ring.